So this trail system is part of the Superstition Wilderness. And uh, I used to come out here quite a bit. Um, and I haven't as much lately. I still come out, but I don't put as many miles on these trails. I've been going to other places. But um, a few years ago, I spent a lot of time, almost the entire spring, um, putting in a lot of miles out here. I trained for that uh, Baton Memorial Death March. That was like three years back. Um, and uh, so I was doing about 30 miles a week out in these trail systems. So pretty cool. I got to explore a lot of these trails and and get out and uh, see a lot of stuff, put some miles in. Um, but I haven't been out here for a while. So what I think I'm going to do today, though, is I'm going to I'm head in on this trail here. And uh, it... It's like a network of trails, so you can link up and, and really rack up some miles if you wanted to. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in where this one joins with another one so I can loop it back to uh, the trailhead. So that way I get to... Uh, um, I always like loop trails because it lets me um, explore new stuff. I'm on new ground all the way around instead of having to backtrack stuff I already saw. Um, Although this place does look dramatically different as the sun's like right now it's like high sun but as the sun gets lower in the sky shadows stretch and um, I've done that before where I've come out and back and on the back route I keep feeling like I'm lost because the whole trail looks different so that's a fun experience too but today I think I want to do kind of a loop and uh, yeah there's been a few hikers out on the trail today but not a whole lot. So it's uh, nice and quiet. So one of these days I want to go up into that country up there up on top of that hill where it's all spiky on the ridge. Um, I, I've seen that from multiple different angles and it uh, just kind of draws my curiosity about the place. Just some interesting terrain and landscape up there. So not today, but one of these days I got to go up there. So I'm getting close to the spot where this trail meets with another trail, and that's the one that I'm going to loop back on. Um, and it kind of goes up over a hill. I think I think up to there actually, if I remember right. But it um. So I uh, so I'm looking for some shade because I don't. It seems like I remember there not being a whole lot on the climb. Um, so I'm gonna take a little break in the shade once I find it and. Um, I was able to cool my feet in the creek back there and get some water on my face and, and cool down there and so I'm going to find some shade where I can uh, eat some food, hydrate, and uh, chill for a bit before I make the climb up and over in the sun. I just met up with the trail junction back there just a little ways and so now I'm about to head up into the, um, the pass that goes up up the hill so I wanted to get some shade here eat some food drink some water and uh, rest for a little bit before I do that heat's not getting to me too bad today um, I forgot to check what the temperature was for today but it was supposed to get you know into the high 80s this week so uh, it might be around there but there's a nice little breeze going and it's it's helping to take some of the some of the heat off and um, we got plenty of water so it's going good
So I'm not sure the camera's picking this up, but there is a substantial amount of bees out here. Not really swarming around me, but I can hear them out here. We got over here. That's a lot of bees. So I just reached the highest point of this hill here. And from here the trail drops down and I'm pretty much going downhill for a lot of the way back. Just another reason why this loop is kind of fun is that I get a, uh, after making that big climb there, I get to start coming down. And um, there's a part where it kind of gets a little bit of a elevation there, but nothing, nothing crazy, just a hill. Um, so yeah. yeah. Still got plenty of sun left, but it's starting to get low enough that the should start casting shadows and making that warmer colored light that I love. So it should be a good uh, good hike back. I always think it's cool to see how much the, uh, the terrain and the landscape and the, the vegetation, um, even the types of rocks, I like to see how all that stuff changes um, from place to place, you know, like on a hike like this, come up over a hill and I mean, all these saguaro cactus all up here, there, there's, you know, every, there was one every now and then back there in that valley I was in, but up here, I mean, they're like everywhere. Um, Pass through some, place a while back over there too that had a all this black black rock some kind of volcanic something probably um, but it was just in that one area there where there's all the mesas and just interesting to to move through this place and, and see the changes and uh you know in a way be a part of that as I'm going about my way pretty cool One of the things I like about springtime is getting to come out and see like how how some of the plants are developing their you know the the growth that they do in the spring um, lets you learn things about them they didn't realize otherwise like right here uh, all these little guys right here these are new this is a, a whipple choya but these little things are coming up in the spring and as you can see on this one you can see how it's making new growth right there so it's just cool to see that and then uh here's another one the uh, uh prickly pear cactus there's one right over here you can see kind of what what it kind of what it's up to here in the spring um there's some there's some spots like right here where it's going to blossom and make flowers but then other ones are making new pads this is a new pad right here um there's one over there. So yeah, it's always kind of fascinating to come out and check, check out even, come out and check out the plants, you know, this time of year. Cause it, um, you get to see this uh, relatively slow motion process kind of at work. Flowers coming out and then all that fun opportunity. Here's another one of these awesome desert spring things. This is the uh, Century Agave. Uh, looks like this for most of the year and then uh, in the spring, well not always, but they part of their life cycle is they shoot this thing up and then it'll get these big flowers up at the top and then that's where the seed pods um, gather and then eventually it falls and, uh, and they grow new ones.
So I'm still coming down this hill here, but in a little bit, um, not too far up ahead, it levels off in a nice little place called uh, the Garden Valley. Um, a lot of chain fruit choya and just open flat ground. Pretty cool little area. Um, and from there I'll drop down again and uh, continue down through through the way and uh, heading back towards the trailhead. Still got a ways left. Um, can't remember exactly what it is from here. I think once I get into the Garden Valley it might be about three miles back to the trailhead. So I'm getting there. But like I say, I really enjoy this this time of the day from, from here. Once that sun drops a little lower too, uh, not only are all the shadows awesome, but the, the lighting is just always so so cool. I always find myself slowing way down and just trying to soak that in. Uh, one of my favorite times of the to be out here. So I didn't realize that that nest was currently inhabited. Uh, before I filmed it, I actually stuck my face up in there and was peeking in there because I was, uh, I just thought it was interesting that there was a nest so deep inside that choya cactus. So I was, I was just taking a look at it and then I was like this close to, to that bird. He's just eyeballing me. It's pretty cool though. They can adapt to this and, and use this harsh environment to actually um, help keep them alive, you know, to keep them protected and stuff. Pretty gnarly stuff. So I'm actually supposed to be going that way, but I want to go this way. This is kind of the garden valley in here, um, but there's some giant chain fruit choy out here that I like to peek at, especially as the sun's getting low, so I want to come look at them and then I'll U-turn this thing and head back uh, in the other direction. So I had a nice little visit with that uh, chain, oh there's a little rabbit. Got distracted by that rabbit. Uh, so yeah, had a nice little visit with the chain fruit choy back there. Um, now I'm heading back toward the trailhead. Um, like I say, I think it's like three miles, might even be a little less than that. Not a bad hike out from here though. Still doing good on the water situation. It's getting a little cooler with the sun going down. Pretty nice though. Oh, there's a lot of choy right here. These things get so big. My favorite time of day to see these things though um, is when the when the sun's at an angle so it shines through the, the needles like that, the spines, make them glow.
This awesome lighting is starting to happen. The uh, sun's getting low enough. It's just like as it gets lower, it's it's kind of a more golden light, so that's cool. But uh, even at this point, there's more shadows on things. Um, the choya are glowing. Even the rocks, like uh, well, and these ones over here. Like there's more shadows and things on there. Uh, you look at the the leaves on the acacia. There's just so much more dimension and everything. So yeah, it's a good time. All right, I got uh, less than a half mile um, to the trailhead, probably closer to a quarter mile from here actually. So, uh, yeah, fun little hike here. Um, temperature wasn't too bad. Gotta do a nice loop, love the loops. It's a good day though, I was needing this.